Okay, in this video I'm going to take you through the basics of um, the 10 basic alkanes as well as for formulas and Lewis dot structures um, and for honors also the organic functional groups. Um, that's going to be the things that we're going to look at today. So, first of all for methane, um, with methane the formula for methane is CH4 and to draw the Lewis dot structure, the Lewis structure Remember, alkanes are all going to have single bonds, and so when you're drawing a Lewis structure, honestly, you just have to draw enough carbons and enough hydrogens to make everybody happy. So for methane, oops, you've got a carbon. I don't know why they're disappearing? Surrounded by four hydrogens. Okay, everybody's happy. Carbon has eight, and you're good. All right, so that's methane. Methane CH4. Ethane is going to be C2, H6. Okay, so for C2H6, you draw a carbon chain that has two carbons, single bonded together. Remember, all alkanes are single bonds. Then you have six hydrogens. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, um, this video will be in the learning bundle as well, so if you need to go back and review or get caught up, um, it will be there for your review. Now, propane, which is obviously a common um, gas used for heating, um, you've got C3H8 and so again the C3 is going to let us know that we have a three carbon chain right in the middle and then we've got eight hydrogens and like I said you're always going to have enough to make everybody happy with the alkane so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Now we get to butane. Butane again, another common fuel, um, butane lighters, is C4H10. Now I'll pause here for just a second. Um, you'll know the pattern. You guys have to know the ten basic, first 10 basic alkanes where carbon's going to get up to 10. The basic formula for these, um, how to remember them, if you can remember them in order, is going to be um, however many carbons you have. If you refer to that as N, then you're going to have H, 2N, plus 2. So just as a reminder here for butane, if you know, you've know you got carbon which is 4, how we came to the 10 over here is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. Some of you will like to remember the formula, some of you will just will want to just memorize them, um, it doesn't matter to me, but that is where those come from. Now I'm going to need some space to get my Lewis structure in here. So for my Lewis structure, I've got four carbons, one, two, three, four, and then ten hydrogens left to make everybody happy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, I'm going to do one more to pentane and then I'm going to really run out of room, but you should be responsible for writing either if I give you the name, you give me the formula or the Lewis structure, or if I give you the Lewis structure or the formula, can you tell me the name for that alkane? And there will be a quiz um, the next time in class. Check your um, specific schedule for details of that. All right, then we've got pentane, which is C5H12. Again, you have five carbons in a row. One, two, three. Sorry, I try not to sneeze. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's going to be enough hydrogens to make everybody happy with single bonds. And you could add up all the electrons and you'd get there the same way we do with Lewis structures. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and 12. Okay? Now, like I said, I'm going to stop drawing Lewis structures here, but you should be able to potentially write them um, for any of these. You've got C6H14, so six carbons in a chain with 14 hydrogens surrounding it. C7H16 is heptane's formula. Remember, hept is going to mean seven, so here we get also get some review for those prefixes. Um, again, seven times two is 14, plus two is 16, so that's another way to get there as well. Octane, you know this from your gasoline, C8, H18, I don't know why it's disappearing. Um, nonane is going to be C9, H20, and decane, C10, 
H22, okay, which again, 10 carbons surrounded by 22 hydrogens. Okay, if you are in regular chem, chemistry, you can pause. Um, chemistry honors, you need to flip the paper over because we're going to talk about functional groups. Now, organic functional groups are another part of um, organic chemistry having to do with carbon. And if you know anyone who's taking organic chemistry, it can get um, kind of insane really fast. And so the functional groups are a way that we kind of help organize and separate things. And so what happens with a functional group is they are attached to a carbon chain. And the way that we show that is just by a, a bond, you know, that's going to be out here. So for an alcohol group, an alcohol group is a um, OH group attached to the end of a carbon chain. And this is what that OH group is going to look like, um, where you've got the oxygen and the hydrogen. Um, I like to show it with the Lewis structures in the beginning. Um, occasionally you will see it also is just OH, but I think when you're particularly learning functional groups for the first time, it's really important to remember the structure and the geometry as well, because this is, this would be the structure of the alcohol, where you can potentially get hydrogen bonding or a dipole-dipole interaction here on the end, as opposed to all of the alkanes that are all nonpolar and all only exhibit London dispersion forces. Okay, so that's just a differential, and that's why I think it's important when we do functional groups to draw the polarity on that stuff. Okay, now in ether, you're going to have a carbon, which could, you know, have anything attached to it. Um, you're going to have a oxygen, or an oxygen, and for the purposes of getting this in the straight line, I'm not going to show the uh, correct geometry here because otherwise it won't fit. <laughs> but you have an oxygen sandwich between two carbons. Again, now you have a place where a dipole-dipole or a hydrogen bond could interact, so it's going to change how that um, molecule can interact with things. Okay, carboxylic acid. You have carbon. Um, off of one side of the carbon, you have a double-bonded oxygen. And again, there are still two lone pairs off of that double-bonded oxygen. And then you also have an OH group. So you have the oxygen and then you have the hydrogen, okay? So you've got double bonded oxygen and then an alcohol group coming off of it as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Now again, I'm really looking more for the um, correct letters and dots and lines here. So if you had the, the H coming out straight, that would be okay for right now. Um, but again, you've got places where there can be hydrogen bonding or dipole-dipole depending on what it's connected to. Now with an aldehyde, you also have a carbon with a double bonded oxygen. And these are just things you're just going to have to flat out memorize. Um, it's going to be, this is the only way you're going to see it. Well, you may have to identify it in a compound, which we'll do together, but for the quiz purposes, if I give you the fu functional structure, can, functional group, can you tell me, draw me the structure? Or if I give you the structure of the functional group, can you um, give me the name of it? And for the aldehyde, you have a double bonded oxygen and just hydrogen. So there are definitely some similarities. You know, I tried to put some of them nearby. Carboxylic acid, and aldehyde both have the double bonded oxygen, carboxylic acid, it's the OH group, aldehyde, it's just the hydrogen. Okay, then we've got a ketone. Um, ketones are going to be the carbon and, oops, and then also a double bonded oxygen in the middle of that carbon chain. So you have a double bonded oxygen and then you have another carbon. So again, all three of these have double bonded oxygens, but here it's a double bonded oxygen and alcohol group, here it's a double bonded oxygen and a hydrogen, and here it's a double bonded oxygen in the middle of a carbon chain. Now an ester is also going to have a double bonded oxygen. So you've got your carbon with a double bonded oxygen right there. Then you have an oxygen in the middle, and then you have another carbon off the end. Okay, so there's your ester right there. You've got your ketones and your esters. Now your amine and your amide, um, if you remember, whenever we've talked about ammonia or ammonium, they both have nitrogen in them. So again, there's some similarities here. Your amine group is going to have carbon um, with just an NH2 group on the end. And again, other um, sources may show just the 
formula, so to speak. I think it's really important in the beginning so that you can start to think about the fact that it would in, it would influence intermolecular forces if there are nitrogen or amine or amide groups or aldehydes and all those things built in. Now for an amide, um, you still have the NH on the end, the NH2 rather, but what you also have is coming off of that carbon is there's that double bonded oxygen again. Okay, so we've got lots and lots of them that have double bonded oxygens, um, but you've got the NH2 group on the end.